This presentation is about nanotechnology in textiles. What can we do with nanotech? Can we wear the invisibility cloak of Harry Potter or just still fanciful? First, we gonna look what is nanotechnology. We know the word of nano means dwarf, and technology is science of craft. Together, what does it mean, nanotechnology? A science of creating useful devices, materials, and systems by manipulating the matter on a minuscule scale. Nanotechnology is a growing interdisciplinary technology often seen as a new industrial revolution. Nanotechnology may be small, but it is leading to some incredible scientific advance that will improve our daily lives. What comes to mind when we say nano? Look at the first thing on the line. Water molecule at 0.1 nanometer, and just glucose molecule is 1 nanometer even smaller than virus, bacteria, and cell. Now, we can see flare. Maybe we don't want to see, but it's 10,000 nanometer. We know that 1 millimeter. And finally, we're gonna see hobbits with naked eye and, of course, imaginary. They are only 1 meter, 1 billion times of nanometer. The nano timeline. Actually, it's not a new thing in our lives. In 19th century, we can see nanoparticles on windows of cathedrals. But we say nano become science in half of 20th century with Richard Feynman. Nanotechnology could bring about the next wave of innovation in science and engineering. The possibilities are endless. And on the future, like 2025, the evolution of nanotechnology could make DNA mapping part of a regular medical checkup. Modifying the human genome will become a common reality, helping to prevent disease such as diabetes. Past or future, we did and we will do lots of things with nanotechnology on every discipline, like physics, biology and chemistry. What about textile? Which doors are open to us? There is a considerable potential for profitable applications of nanotechnology in cotton and other textile industries. The use of nanotechnology in the textile industry has increased rapidly due to its unique and valuable properties. The recent development of nanotechnology in textile areas, including textile formation and textile finishing, basically based on nanoparticles. Nanotechnology has been discovered by the textile industry, in fact. A new area has developed in the area of textile finishing, called nanofishing. The nanotechnology innovations in the textile industry include both the development of new materials and the improvement of existing materials, especially existing materials. The use of nanotechnology allows textiles to become multifunctional. The so-called plasma technology, for instance, is being used to modify the top nanometer layers of textiles making them antibacterial, water-repellent, and able to kill fungus at the same time. We can see on military, or electronic textile, or sportswear, or medical fabrics.
We can use nanotechnology in textiles. There are different ways. First, nanotechnology in fibers and yarns. Second, nanotechnology in coatings. Third, e-textile. Let's look at scale one. You can see ordinary fibers with naked eyes. They are just millimeters. Microfibers are smaller than ordinary fibers, but they are still deficient. Nanofibers are smaller than one meter 10 billion times. First one is nanotechnology in fibers and yarns. The difference with normal fibers is that nanofibers have larger surface areas that can be used to react with the environment. Molecular layers and a smaller pore size in the fabrics lead to, for example, self-cleaning and entrapment possibilities. A different type of nanofibers are nanostructured composite fibers. These fibers contain nano-sized fillers such as clay or metal nanoparticles, graphite nanofibers or carbon nanotubes. Another possibility in composite fibers are nanotin coatings around each fiber. The nano-sized fillers and coatings are used to increase the mechanical strength and improve the physical properties such as conductivity or antistatic behavior. In using an electron microscope, nanofibers are part of the nano world where sizes measure around one billionth of a meter. Nanofibers are already changing our lives, giving new properties and things around us. A small drop of polymer solution is the starting point in making nanofiber. The drop is electrically charged in a high voltage electric field to give birth to nanofiber. The fibers are laid over each other resulting in a nanofiber mat. You can get an idea of the small size of nanofiber by comparison with bacteria, which are unable to penetrate through a nanofiber mat as the pore size of the mat is much smaller than the size of the bacteria. Nanofibers are thus capable of protecting against bacteria and viruses. A nanofiber membrane can stop water from passing through, such as through clothes. Drops of water slip away on the mat's surface. However, textile materials of nanofibers are very breathable because air molecules can get through the same membrane easily. For example, a nanofiber breathing mask prevents bacteria from being inhaled, yet at the same time allows comfortable breathing. There are hundreds of nanofiber applications. Owing to their specific characteristics, nanofibers are a revolutionary material for the third millennium. Another interesting development are the so-called controlled release polymers. They activate the release of, for example, antifungals, fragrances, or medical growth aids to the fabric. The triggered release systems can be made responsive to stimuli, such as changes in temperature, humidity, and oxygen levels. One of these is nanosuck. Nanosucks really keep your feet from smelling. Secret key is silver. Silver nanoparticles can be found in sucks and support clothing because of their ability to kill bacteria and inhibit unwanted odors. Nanosilver sucks contain about 55% cotton, 30% of antibacterial yarn nanosilver, and roughly 15% elastin. Silver nanoparticles are embedded in the full volume of the yarn and remain active for the lifetime of the sun. 
The synthetic yarn wicks sweat away from the skin into the cotton component, which increases comfort of wearing. If add used with the amplified in membrane footwear, also out of the shoe, which keeps your feet dry. The silver with known antibacterial properties to textile products by combining cellulosic and or synthetic fibers and silver fibers with the method of blending yarn, silver containing yarn, and subsequently silver mixed textile products are produced, like sacks. How we can manufacture nanofibers? Self-assembly method, phase separation method, multiplying method, drawing method, and the last one, and mostly using electrospinning method. Syringe, needle, high voltage power supply and the collector plate. The polymer solution is pumped to the tip of the needle. An electric field is created between the tip of the needle and the collector plate by applying high voltage in the system. When the surface tension in the liquid droplet is overcome by the force of the electric field, the droplet is distorted forming the so-called Taylor current. The distortion leads to an electrically charged jet ejection that moves towards the collector, thus forming thin fibers. When a rotating collector is used, aligned polymer fibers are generated. At the end of the video, we collected fibers and combined nanofiber membrane and brought together normal non-woven fabrics. The second one is nanotechnology in coatings. Textile finishing. It's literally a very thin, optically transparent plastic polymer film that coats whatever you have treated with it with a surface measuring, literally atoms thick. When you treat something with a nanoprotective coating, you are covering the surface in a tiny surface of nanoprotectant that's atoms thin. Every surface, no matter how smooth it might feel to the touch, has tiny little dents and holes in it, even something like glass. When look at the under a microscope, has tiny little holes in the structure. These little irregularities are what let dirt and water bond to it, because they increase the surface area and so the surface tension of whatever is touching it. It's like a handhold for the dirt to grab hold of. Nanoparticles are so small. They easily fit into all of these irregularities, and their structure keeps them stable, leveling out of the surface and making it almost completely flat, unable to bond with the surface, water, dirt, oils and fats, just ball up and slip straight off 
of whatever has been treated with the nano coating, making cleaning it's as simple as a quick wipe with a cloth. It's called the lotus effect was first discovered when scientists look at the bunch of flowers. How it works? The lotus flower has a peculiar quality to its blossom which keeps the leaves absolutely clean. Dust and dirt just sit on the top of the leaves and then whenever it rains, the water beats off it is exactly like we just described keeping the lotus flower perfectly clean. Now, nanocoatings are available for pretty much everything that we use, from the products in and around our homes, to the clothes we wear and the way cars we drive. The first picture shows us a normal surface. The drop can fill spaces, which we talk irregular holes. The surface will be wet, although the second one, which has less holes, will be wet too. The last one is surface with coating. The surface is so smooth and the water drop can't hold on the surface and slides away. Do pants with nano-coating actually shed water? and stains better, nanoparticles of silica incorporate into the wave of a fabric or sprayed onto its surface create a coating that repels water and stain producing liquids. The angle and roughness of the silica coating creates enough surface tension to ensure that liquids form beads that roll off the fabric rather than soaking into it. This is microscopic image of nanocated plate. The last one is e-textiles. E-textiles, often confounded with smart textiles, are fabrics that enable digital components such as a battery and a light and electronics to be embedded in them. 